All right, students. So I uh, hope you're excited. This uh, would be your last assignment for your 2019-2020 uh, algebra career. Uh, and uh, the last assignment I'll be giving you. So uh, hopefully that's a little bittersweet. It is for me. It's been a pleasure and a privilege to be your teacher. And I trust you learned some things uh, this chapter. Hey, we've got a few videos left. And uh, obviously you can, you know, realize with no assignments, you can just skip them. But that wouldn't be the wise thing to do. If you want a more complete education, finish the videos. And I would even recommend that you read through the rest of the book. Um, you know, a math education is different than any other discipline to where it builds upon itself. And the things that uh, you miss uh, can hurt you. And so my recommendation is read through the other chapters that we did not have time to get to. And that will help you come time to take Algebra 2. All right, let's get right into it as we go through 1 through 14. All right, the first three... It wants you to solve, and it's using the principle of the zero product property. So just be clear, you're to take, because you already have, look, this factor times this factor. This is the A times the B. Either A equals zero or B equals zero or both equals zero. And you can see at a positive two to both that sides on that one add a negative 3 to both sides on that one, and you get x equal 2, you get x equal negative 3. And there are the two solutions to number 1, 2 and negative 3. All right, so 2 is already set equal to 0, so that's good. Again, take each quantity, set it equal to 0. On the first one, add a negative 6 to both sides and get x equal negative 6. On the second, add a positive 10 to both sides and get it x equals positive 10. There are your two solutions x equals negative 6 and x equals 10. Now, on this third one, we have three terms. There's your a, there's your b, and there's your c, right? All multiplied together. So the a could be a 0, the b could equal 0, or the c could equal 0. If any one of them are 0, then the whole thing is 0. All right, this one, divide both sides by 2 and get 0. That's one answer, A equals 0. In this one, add a positive 1 to both sides, divide, divide both sides by 4, A equals 1 fourth. Add a negative 9 to both sides, divide both sides by 3. And there are your three solutions. Make sure you have three, A equals 0, A equals 1 fourth, and A equals negative 3. So this is the principle of solving a quadratic and really any polynomial equation. The zero product property, very important. All right, solve by factoring. So now you have to get to this point. So notice back here, that was factored, that was factored, and that was factored. All the factoring was done. Here now they want you to factor and then solve. Okay, so again, we gotta be good at factoring. We notice it is set equal to zero, so that's the first thing. All right, the fronts have to be x and x. Remember, the backs have to multiply to negative, five, to negative 10, but I'm looking for a positive 3 in the middle. See, so I already know that plus 5 gives me a positive 5x. That negative 2 gives me a negative 2x for a middle term of outers plus inners of indeed that positive 3x. So that's the correct factoring. Now set each factor equal to 0 and solve the little equation. Add a positive 2 to both sides, add a negative 5 to both sides. x equals 2, x equals negative 5. All right, we're set equal to 0. Good. We're ready to factor. x squared has to be x and x. You know what? Negative 7, you're only going to have 1 and 7. Now again, I'm noticing my middle term of a negative 6. So watch. If I put my negative 7 there, that's a negative 7x for the outers. And then my positive 1 has to go there. Because again, the 1 times the negative 7 has to be that negative 7. So 7 negatives and 1 positive indeed gives me that correct middle. See that? All right. So then now set each factor equal to 0 and solve the little equation. Add a negative 1 to both sides. Oops, get that negative sign obvious there. Add a positive 7 to both sides. x equals negative 1. 
and x equals 7. Now, number 6 tends to get students. Remember, we're factoring. The difference is this is a binomial. So if you go back to the, to the chapter, what's the first law of factoring? Factor out common factors first. There is a common 2 that can come out. But not only that, there is a common y that can come out. When I get the common 2 and the common y out, I get 4y squared minus 1 equals 0. Now, we're not done. Because now we have to remember that this is a difference of two squares, right? Remember, whenever you have a binomial, and let me get that front part. Don't forget your front part. Whenever you have a binomial, if it's going to factor further, it needs to be a difference of two squares. This is. So remember two parentheses, plus in the middle of one, minus in the middle of the other. Square root of the front in the front square root of the back in the back, and that equals 0. So now we can have the 2y equaling 0. So y equals 0, right? Divide both sides by 2. 2y plus 1 equals 0. Add a negative 1 to both sides. 2y equals negative 1. Divide both sides by 2. y equals negative 1 half. There's my second value. Set the 2y minus 1 equal to 0. Add a positive 1 to both sides. Divide both sides by 2, and you get positive 1 half. So maybe you wrote it like this. Whoops. Maybe you wrote it like this. Y equals 0, and then you can write plus or minus 1 half, and that's all three values, right? Okay. Hopefully, 6 would have been the tougher one. Uh, those of you that got that, bravo, Zulu to you. Great job. And... Uh, Again, math building upon itself, right? Uh, you got to be able to factor to be able to do this chapter. And really, all, all a lot of Algebra 2 is factoring. And upper-level math involves factoring, factoring, factoring. But here's, here's the good news. The more you do it, the better you get at it. All right. Solve by taking roots. Okay, so the key is to isolate the squared term and then take the square root of both sides. Well, notice the squared term is isolated. So we're already ready to take the square root of both sides, but here's the other part you have to remember. When you take the square root of both sides, don't forget the plus minus. Now, if the square root of 6 would have simplified, I would simplify it. It does not, so it's just simply x equals plus or minus the square root of 6. Notice this quadratic, we got two solutions. So there are two solutions to the quadratic. All right, on number 8, I have to isolate my square term. So move things added first by adding their opposite. Add a positive 7 to both sides. Move things multiplied by multiplying by the reciprocal or dividing both sides by it. So now I'm at y squared equals 4. Now that my variable is isolated, I can take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus minus because you should be expecting two values, x equals positive 2 x equals negative 2. If you put positive 2 in for the y squared, the left side equals the right side. If you put negative 2 in for the y squared, the left side equals the right side. Solve by taking roots. So again, we have to take roots, but here's the special case, right? Notice how this quantity is squared and it's isolated. That means I am ready to take the square root of both sides. So once again, Square roots undo squares, and here, don't forget the plus minus. Next step, x minus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 11. So I need to move this 4 by adding a positive 4 to both sides. And normally, its position is to be in front of any square root. So my final answer is x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 11. Now, that's two solutions. Remember, that's 4 plus the square root of 11, right? x equals 4 plus the square root of 11, and x equals 4 minus the square root of 11. But we're able to write it together to show both terms. Now, in number 10, we have got to move this 25 before we take the square root of both sides. So we're going to divide both sides by 25. Now I'm ready to take the square root of both sides because notice now my squared quantity is isolated. So I'm ready to take the square root of the left, 
take the square right, don't forget the plus minus. Now, a couple issues here. Remember, math builds upon itself. So this is going to be plus or minus the square root of 12 over the square root of 25. Now, most students have no problem with the square root of 25. They know that, indeed, that is 5. But the square root of 12, we have to simplify. Right? So I left a little room here to show you the simplification. What's the square root of 4? 2, and we get a 2 out. So I want to show you where we are. We're at x minus 1 equals plus or minus the square root. I'm sorry. This is my 2 there, right? x minus 1 equals plus or minus 2 times the square root of 3 over 5. And then I have to move this 1 by adding a positive 1 to both sides. And again, it's going to go in front. So here's one form of the answer. 1 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 3 over 5. And that's, that's an OK form. There are other forms you can get it into, and you can split it up into 2. right? You could split that up into 2 if you really, 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 really wanted to. All right. 9 and 10. Interesting. 11 and 12, solve by completing the square. So we have to complete the square, and then we have to solve by that methodology. All right, notice we are set equal to 0, so that's good. So you're supposed to isolate the squared term, so let me show that. And then leave some room, because we have to put a quantity into there. Now. We have to figure out what to put in here to get this trinomial right here to be a perfect square. So do you remember, you take the b value, do it down here, and you divide by 2, and then you square it. So we need a 16. But here's the thing. I just added 16 to the left side of the equation. Now, it used to equal 0. It no longer equals 0, because how can I just shove a 16 on the left-hand side? But the way to keep it equaling 0 is to also subtract a 16 from the left-hand side. Now, I'm keeping everything balanced. All right, so do you remember how to change this into the other form? So a perfect square becomes a binomial, square root of the front, sine of the middle, square root of the back, and it's quantity squared. And then I'm just going to add the positive 7 and the negative 16 to get a negative 9, and that equals 0. Okay, now it's like the problems we just did. It looks just like these, right? It does. And therefore, now I'm ready to solve by taking the square root of both sides. So I'm going to add a, whoops, <laughs> had my eraser. I thought I had my back tool. So right now, then, I want to add a positive 9 to both sides, right? And now I'm ready to take the square root of both sides. And don't forget the plus minus. So here's where we're at. Square roots undo squares. The left is x plus 4. And the right is plus or minus square root of 9 is 3. So now you have to remember to split this up into two equations to finish. x plus 4 equals positive 3 and x plus 4 equals negative 3. This will give us our two values. Add a negative 4 to both sides, right? And you're going to end up with x equal negative 1. There's one solution. Add a negative 4 to both sides, and you're going to end up with x equal negative 7, and there's the other solution. Go back and check it out. So let me go back. I'll show you. Let's put the negative 1 into the original. The negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 times 8 is a negative 8. Um, 1 minus 8 is a negative 7. Negative 7 plus 7 indeed equals 0. Negative 1 works. How about this negative 7? Negative 7 squared is 49. Negative 7 times 8 is a negative 56. 49 minus 56 is a negative 7. 7 negatives plus 7 positives indeed equals 0. Sure enough, we found the two correct solutions. All right, number 12. 
So number 12, um, I can leave that 3 on the other side. Um, it does not matter. And I'll do this one that way. I could do it the way I did the first one, but my squared terms, my variable terms, excuse me, have to be together. So again, notice I'm going to take the 5. So this one's a little trickier. Divide by 2 and square it. Hmm. This is 25 fourths. Now, I added a 25 fourths to the left. I also have to add a 25 fourths to the right to keep it balanced, right? Tricky. I know. Fractions. Get over your fractional phobia, right? All right, let's continue. So now we are ready to get the perfect square trinomial. Square root of the front, sine of the middle, square root of the back. What did we square to get 25 over 4? A 5 halves. So the square root is just whatever we squared. All right, on the right, common denominator. Multiply this by 4. Whatever you do to the bottom, do the same thing to the top. 12 fourths plus 25 fourths is going to be a grand total of 37 fourths? Yuck. Boy, I do not like that. Not one bit, but such is life. Okay. Notice how I'm isolated. So let's take the square root of the left, take the square root of the right. Don't forget the plus minus. Here's where we're at. X plus 5 halves equals plus or minus the square root of 37 over what's the square root of 4? 2. Now I'm real close. I need to add a negative 5 halves to the left and a negative 5 halves to the right. And don't forget, it, this always goes in front of the other part. So plus or minus goes in the middle. Square root of 37, is that going to show? It does. Okay, over 2. Whoops. Wanted me to move my, my little uh, extra window there. All right, and that's the answer. X equals negative 5 halves plus or minus the square root of 37 halves. All right. Got it? You good? I hope so. All right. Last one here. Last two. Again, solve by completing the square. So, again, I'm going to do this one on the left because it's already set equal to 0. I want to factor out the common 2. Now, if you don't do that, you're going to get the problem wrong. Now, I could move that negative 5 right now, but I'm going to do this one the one way. I'm going to do 14 the other way. So again, take this value. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 squared is 25. But here's where students mess up. I added a positive 50 to the left. So to stay, I have to add a negative 50 to the left. That keeps it at zero. Now I'm keeping the left side at where it was. All right, so I got this two, square root of the front, sine of the middle, square root of the back, quantity squared, minus 55 equals zero. Move the 55 to the other side by adding a positive 55 to both sides. Divide both sides by two, and here's where I'm at x minus 5 quantity squared equals 55 halves. Let's take the square root of both sides. Square root of the left, square root of the right. Don't forget the plus minus. So notice how we're, we're putting together things we've already learned. So here's the left, plus or minus the square root of 55 over the square root of 2. Can I leave a square root in the bottom? No. I must rationalize the denominator. Square root of 2 over square root of 2. So now I'm at x minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 110 over 2. And how do I finish this thing off? I add a positive 5 to both sides. So what's the final answer? x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 110 over 2. And it's not an easy problem, but it's a doable problem. So watch number 14. It's the same exact same type of problem, 
But instead of working on the left, see how I added that negative 50 to the left because there was a positive 50 on the left? I'm going to move everything to the right and deal with it that way. So watch what's going to happen. Move this at a positive 3 to both sides. Now factor out the common 3. Don't factor out the common T. You could. You don't want to. It defeats your purpose. So some students say, but I can get a T out. Yeah, I know. But remember, factoring is a means to an end. And if you try to use that means right now, you're just going to mess yourself up. So you don't want to do that. You want to leave that T right there. Because what we're trying to set up is a perfect square trinomial. So again, the other thing I can do is I can move this 3 right now. Divide both sides by 3. Students sometimes like this because it clears up some of the other issues. Okay, so what goes in here? 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. If I add a positive 9 to the left, I also add a positive 9 to the right to keep it balanced. So see, by, by moving that 3, it makes life a whole lot easier. Uh, most students find that way easier. Sometimes it'll give you a fraction, but in this case, it was not bad. Okay, so let's change this into a perfect square. Square root of the front, sine of the middle, square root of the back, quantity squared equals a 10. We are now ready to take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus minus. So this is t minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 10. And all we have to do is add a positive 3 to both sides. And that should be our answer. Um, everything's right with the world. T equals, uh, ooh, I just looked and it was uh, way back here. Were you drinking the Kool-Aid? That should have been a plus. Therefore, that's a plus. Therefore, that's a plus. Therefore, we got to, and therefore, that's a plus. And therefore, we got to add a negative 3 to both sides. Okay, there's our answer. T equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 10. Quadratics, um, they are fundamental to Algebra 2. When you get to your Algebra 2 course, I'm just going to warn you, you're going to jump right in. I think second chapter, you're going to be solving quadratics. So this isn't a topic where you just say, oh, well, you know, I don't really get it. You know, it's life. It's going to pop up very, very quickly in your Algebra 2. And in the rest of your Algebra 2, you're going to be using these principles. So get them down now. Get it figured out now. You got time to get it figured out. Get it figured out now, and that will help you the rest of your math career. Hey, that's it. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, remember, uh, when I'm long gone, I'm going to try to leave those videos up at uh, Rick Scarfy playlist on YouTube. And uh, you know, when you get to your Algebra two class, they'll be there. You can let the pre-algebra and algebra one students uh, remind them they're there for their help. And uh, boy, if I could ever be a help to you, I'd love to do that. All right. Uh, you have a great day.